Seventh house is the most connected to love as it represents the other person or the person of interest. It has long been considered the house of partnerships of all kinds, especially marriage or business. I'm going to take a look at every single planet placed in the seventh house or ruling the seventh house to describe your love nature and the people you're more likely to attract. Let's take a look. My name is Anastasia. I'm a traditional Western astrologer specializing in natal relationship and predictive astrology. I do readings, I create content for you guys. As a Libra rising, I'm super interested in relationships, so talking about the seventh house is very exciting for me. If you have any questions and you'd like a personal reading, you can book, at, book it at anastasia.astrology.com. There's a link down below. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe, leave me a like or a comment. I highly appreciate that. And it encourages YouTube to show my content to more people, so helps me get more exposure. And since you guys found me, I'm sure you wouldn't mind helping me out. Before we dive in, I wanted to highlight a few of my candles that are especially beneficial for those struggling with love and romantic topics. I am someone born with Venus in Virgo. It took me a long time of dating people who were not really worth my time until I found someone. And I believe part of me finding someone who is like really great and makes me happy is due to my work with planetary magic because Helping my Venus was the first goal I ever had doing this. Um, but enough about me. I am creating candles and oils that have planetary properties. And they're very specific because they're connected to the times the planet is most powerful. And I have Venus in Libra candle or oil and Venus Kazemi candle or oil. This one is perfect for manifesting new relationships. This one is more for existing relationships and I would highly recommend this for people with their Venus in an air or fire sign. So if you're born with Venus in Aries, Sagittarius or Leo or if your natal Venus is in Gemini or Aquarius, not so much Venus in Libra because you already have this so technically you're good. Um, and I also created Moonly Trinity candles. This one was created with Venus in Taurus conjunct moon in Taurus so there's double supportive energy exalted moon Venus and rulership it's I love the scent of this candle absolutely it smells like strawberries and cream and it came out so perfect just because the selection election was perfect and this one is best for those with Venus in an earth or water sign so if your Venus is in Scorpio Cancer or Pisces and if your natal Venus is in Virgo or Capricorn. Once again, if you have Venus in Taurus, you should be good. But if you need help with love, check out these creations. They can definitely help you get more aligned with the energy of cooperation and passion and joy in relationships. And those are on my website as well, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. So I've done a general video on houses. Check that out. There's a link down below if you want to know what the houses mean. Overall, it's kind of lovely for understanding. Um, no house is ever empty. So if your seventh house is empty, as an astrologer, I get people, to, people, I get questions like, if my house is empty, does this mean I'm never gonna get married? And that's not the answer because like I said, no house is ever empty. Every house has a landlord. So you would look at the sign on your seventh house cusp or at the sign of your descendant to see which planet is in charge. And then you would listen for that planet. For example, Aries and Scorpio is ruled by Mars. I'm a traditional astrologer. So in traditional astrology, Scorpio is ruled by Mars, not Pluto. Um, Taurus and Libra ruled by Venus. Gemini and Virgo ruled by Mercury. Cancer is ruled by the moon. Leo is ruled by the sun. Pisces and Sagittarius ruled by Jupiter. Capricorn and Aquarius ruled by Saturn. So listen to those planets with the seventh house we're entering the upper part of the chart so the second half of the chart where the meanings of houses become opposite to those directly across from them so seventh house is opposite from the first first house is you seventh house is the other person right the other people in your life so it's really fascinating because sometimes we may have a difficult difficult placement and 
it would relate to us, but it can also actually describe other people in our life. So if you are a Libra rising with Venus and Aries in your seventh house, you may deal with relationship complications, but it could also be a sign that your partner is dealing with personal issues, for example. But the opposition is very, I think, helpful for understanding. So if you know that first house, always holds the ascendant, always represents you, your physical body, your quirks, your personality. Seventh house, exactly opposite it, would describe people you draw into your life, your partners, their quirks, their physical look and personality. So it's, it's the house of like significant relationships. It's a social house because seventh house represents other people, but it's a very intimate social house we've dealt like third house is a social house and i've described it in my past videos but in the third house we're sort of it's like the people we run into it is our siblings but it's also people we run into people we have like shorter interactions with and even with our siblings we are close to them sometimes sometimes we're not um sometimes we still stay in touch with them sometimes we don't talk to them for a while Seventh house relationships are very intimate, very close and personal. It's someone you would call in the middle of the night and they will pick up the phone and it's not going to be considered considered like an intrusion, right? Because if you call your spouse in the middle of the night and you're stuck somewhere, they will pick up and they will go get you. <laughs> that's, the, that's the contractual obligation between the two of you. And seventh house actually holds contracts. It holds agreements we have with other people, spoken agreements or not spoken agreements. Like if you have Mercury in your seventh house, you will likely without saying it, but you will agree to talk a lot to one another or to stay in touch all the time. Like you will need a lot of mental intellectual stimulation in your relationship. It's the, it's the angular house. So it's the third angular house as we're traveling through the houses. First one was the first basically the houses that are at angles ascendant descendant ic and mc are angular houses and they're more important because they ask important questions with the first house it's all about who you are the fourth house is where you live where you come from with the seventh house we're asking who you're with so and you know the 10th house is left and the 10th house is what you do for a living so major questions that people always want to know so it has more weight, it has more importance, similarly to the first or the fourth, and it holds your marriage, so most intimate relationship, it holds your business, because your business partner can be like your spouse at times. For some people who don't get married, their business partners can be very kind of close and intimate relationship they have. Um, describes what your partner looks like, describes what you expect, as I said, what they expect. And finally, interestingly enough, it also represents our open enemies. 12th house is the hidden enemies, 7th house is open enemies. So it's people you know about, people you know that they don't like you. And it kind of, you know, it's kind of logical considering that that saying from love to hate is one step. Um, from lovers to haters, right? Like, or haters to lovers. So it's, it's literally sometimes a person you scream, you, you screamed about your love to them for a long time and then you get divorced and this person is someone whose guts you hate and vice versa. Maybe they don't like your guts. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, seventh house is an interesting house. And please share with me what planets you have in your seventh house. And now let's talk about each planet from the sun to Pluto. And I'm also dropping in Chiron in there because those are the planets I tend to work with. So if you are, if you have the sun in the seventh house, it means the sun is our identity. It's our consciousness, our goals, and our ego. So when your son is in the seventh house, you're very other people oriented. You may feel most comfortable, most yourself, most at home in the context of your relationship. And you're also someone who's very aware of relationships and dynamics and other people and what they want. Of course, the danger here could be getting codependent, right? And sort of 
losing yourself because you're too focused on your partner and their needs and so i would highly advise for anyone with their son and share down below if that's your placement for anyone with their son in the seventh house to focus on building unique stable identity kind of figuring out what you want to do who you are um and what makes you happy so you can enjoy alone time and not just want to be with your partner all the time as as in seventh house describing your partner seventh house son could mean a sunny partner someone who's a leader someone who's prominent and notable someone who craves the spotlight right leo leo type um on the negative they can be maybe a little bit arrogant a little bit self-absorbed and self-involved um, I, th I have a friend who's a Leo rising with the sun in Aquarius and she dated my my classmate in Russia actually and he can definitely be a little bit like in his own world too, too self-focused um, but it can also be someone who is you know successful and prominent and maybe maybe a governor or maybe someone who is in an authority position or a leader so it could also be a source of benefits like sometimes when you have this placement you marry someone who um, helps you become more outgoing or who brings like gifts into your um, into your life so share with me if this resonates and if that's the people you tend to go for if that's your placement if you have the moon in the seventh house relationships are very important to you you're potentially looking for someone who is emotionally can like fulfill you but also maybe intellectually you tend to be someone very nurturing very supportive of people in your life very kind of caring and protective intuitive about what they want and if you have the moon in a strong position if it's in Taurus or if it's in Cancer you're probably likely to get the same in return if there is a difficulty to your moon if it's in Capricorn or Scorpio highly recommend getting Mumia Trinity candle or oil for that um, but if it's in a more compromised position it might be harder for you to get that in return it, there might be an imbalance where maybe you're the one who gives more than the other person um, you crave security you find security in relationships you kind of crave stability um, you can be I think you're like seen as a very nurturing person so being in a job that requires you to mother your colleagues or protect your colleagues somehow or protect other people is likely you know being a social worker I can see here um, and it often gives popularity with the public too because people like those who care for them right so if you have that if you have that adaptable lunar nurturing emotional energy that is quite lovely um what what's interesting here is because the moon goes through ebbs and flows your attitude towards relationships and your attitude towards your partner can also go through ebbs and flows but more often than not you will be drawn unless there are other planets in the seventh house the chart needs to be looked at altogether but more often than not, you will be drawn to people who are moody or sensitive or emotional. If you're a woman, you're not likely to date someone who's like a macho, tattooed, biker, says two words type, right? Like you need someone who is soft and receptive and maybe maybe childlike in some regard. And that can, that can flip-flop. Like at times you can be the one nurturing them, at other times you may be drawn to people who are more like parental towards you so either you mother them or they mother you right <laughs> but you do need to be ready that partners you draw in are likely to be softer so if you if you got attracted to them because they're so emotional and vulnerable and then you start asking them to be more like to man up just be be aware of that that that's not what you draw in or that's not what you desire um so yeah the partner can be like i said someone emotional you can also become kind of more emotional and moody after marriage more so than the rest of us um maybe you kind of become more open with your emotions 
and partners who are kind of feminine in some regard motherly in some regard will be attractive to you and please let me know if that's that's what it is if that's the truth for you if you have mercury in the seventh house mercury is what we value intellectually what we tend to think about so here you will be thinking a lot about other people maybe kind of more aware of what the dynamics are where the truth is what's kind of you know even even yes relationships romantically but also i apologize for the loud sounds um new york <laughs> window is open so but like even even just wondering about community even like being curious about you know how to make the community work mercury tends to be fast so there might be a faster turnaround, more partners, more opportunities to date. You will value intellectual compatibility. You will be drawn to people who are talkers. You're not gonna be turned on by someone who's silent. You really need a partner who can communicate. Um, I'm dating a Pisces rising and his seventh house is Virgo and I have three planets in Virgo and I have Mercury in the first house. So <laughs> definitely not a quiet type. So you see that in, you know, I see it in my life too. Um, but yeah, like you, you're drawn to intellectual person. You're drawn to someone you can share your thoughts with and discuss topics. There, there can be a bit of like younger dynamic because Mercury is a very young planet so either they're actually younger than you are or they're just youthful in their appearance um can also be a lovely placement for public speaking for you being a writer or being like expressing yourself verbally because people will resonate with what you're saying a lot more watch out for arguments or kind of disagreements that are petty or silly and let me know how this resonates in the comments below if you have Venus in the seventh house, you are in luck, especially if it's Venus in Taurus, Libra, or Pisces. A bit more complicated for Aries, Scorpio, or Virgo, and that's why I would highly recommend either my Venus in Libra or Moonlit Trinity candle for those who have these placements. But in general, Venus in the seventh house is very relationship-oriented Venus. Um, she will make you a peacemaker. You will want to have happy relationships, always compromise, avoid fights unless you have other placements there. Or it's like Venus and Aries or Venus and Scorpio. Um, but it's, you know, in general, it's like a good placement to have in relationships. Unless, unless, as always, right? So good at keeping balance, good at getting along. Um, tends to be really good at attracting people that correspond to your desires unless it's compromised somehow um and please share with me how has this placement been for you if that's what you have you definitely will desire a relationship you will value relationship a lot but then the rest will depend on the rest of your chart people you will be drawn towards are likely to be good looking um charming um affectionate expressive right maybe maybe artistic somehow like a creative partner they may be a bit self-indulgent because venus can be very much like have all the cake in the world you can also become a bit more self-indulgent with this placement after marriage and at times you see people marry more than once because venus can have a bit of an energy of just like let's have fun so not every marriage can turn into the final fun. Sometimes there might be more to come. I'd love to know how it resonates with you guys in the comments below. For those with Mars in the seventh house, Mars is the fighter. So wherever Mars is placed, you're more likely to encounter conflict. So having Mars in the seventh house is not always fun. And my seventh house is ruled by Mars and I'm dating someone with Mars in the seventh house. So it's, it's a very active relationship. There's going to be fights potentially, which, you know, they don't have to be bad. Like my boyfriend and I, we like bicker about stuff. It's, it's very rarely big. It's usually like just something that gets resolved pretty quickly. And I like that, you know, I like that we're able to kind of air things out instead of 
instead of swallow it out. So, so y- there could be fights in a relationship, um, but it's not bad when you're learning how to fight. Like you need to know how to fight in a relationship. You need to know how to come together and you need to know how to compromise. Like if both people are not into apologizing and compromising, that's where I can see this being an issue. But if you are willing to talk it out, to understand each other, then it becomes better. Um, Additionally, people you're drawn to are martial. So active, maybe aggressive, maybe competitive people. You yourself can be more competitive, but it's interesting with planets in the seventh house because sometimes we don't see them in ourselves, we see them in others. So these qualities get brought out in you when you are in a relationship. So if you think your partner is competitive, look in the mirror and maybe think whether you are competitive or not. So, you know, like, like once again, with my boyfriend and him having Mars in the seventh house, attracting someone who is like active. I exercise five to six times a week. I run a business. I'm busy constantly. So it's, I think that's where the energy shows up for sure. So like you need, you need a partner who is active, dynamic, expressive, independent. You can be yourself very independent and you can also become more active and your life can like speed up after marriage. And let me know how this resonates in the comments below. Do you have this placement? How does it show up for you? If you have Jupiter in the seventh house, Jupiter tends to expand things. So sometimes Jupiter in the seventh could mean getting married more than once. So it's not always like, it's not always just fun and games, right? Sometimes with Jupiter, it could mean that you're, you love, you love to marry, you want more, you want jolly marriage ceremony. So that could be, I think, the more negative side of it. But for the most part, Jupiter in seventh is pretty good. I think it's good. Um, it's good for attracting people who are helpful and supportive because seventh house is other people, right? And Jupiter wants to help out. You may struggle to see your own wisdom and your own gifts. You may see them in other people because that's how seventh house works. A lot of times planets in there, we see them in others. We don't see them in ourselves. So you may kind of, you may kind of feel the success of other people stronger and doubt yourself or doubt your wisdom. Um, But it's beneficial for drawing people in who are going to help you. Even romantically, it's not going to protect you from heartbreak or it's not going to protect you from, maybe for some of you it does, um, but it's, it can definitely be a bit more, it, you know, not going to protect you from heartbreak, but will teach you the lessons. Like the people you date, they will all be there to help you grow. And I have Jupiter in my seventh house and absolutely like, you know, every single relationship. And I think it's probably true for most of us, but I've noticed that after every single experience, I came out of it a little bit wiser, a little bit more mature. So that is definitely a positive thing of it. Um, Jupiter in the seventh could be a sign of marrying someone of a different culture than you, someone foreign. Um, someone different than you. They can also be very Jupiterian, which could mean jolly and big, right? (laughs) But it can also mean teacher, guide, um, religious person, or someone who is like um, an influential figure somehow, right? Or just someone really wealthy. That's also a possibility. And this is especially good placement if your Jupiter is in the sign it rules, Pisces or Sagittarius, or the sign it's exalted, Cancer. More complicated if you have Jupiter in the opposite signs, Virgo, Gemini, or Capricorn. And in those cases, I would highly recommend getting my Jupiter in Pisces candle or oil. These are almost sold out, so they may not be available when you watch this video, but maybe there's still a couple left. Check out AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. If you have Saturn in the seventh house, Saturn is all about hard work, duties, and boundaries. So it can mean that you are someone who is very serious about relationships. You don't take them lightly. You don't necessarily choose flings, you might be more oriented towards long-term relationship and Saturn will stabilize, especially as you get older. 
this is not the placement in general it's not recommended with this placement to get married in your early 20s late 20s mid 30s is better because that's when you go through your saturn return you understand yourself better you're more mature aware and your relationship is likely to be more stable so don't rush to get married if you have this placement you may also be drawn to people who are older than you um, or mature, right? Like Capricornian or Aquarian type, someone who is reliable, trustworthy, hardworking, self-built, self-made type person. Um, they might be more conservative. There might be more private. So sometimes, you know, if you are, and if you are, let's say, a Leo rising and you have Saturn and Aquarius, you may feel like maybe you're more playful and your partner is more strict kind of boring but in, at the same time that side is also something you crave in a relationship and something that you desire you seek in a partner right so so definitely topics of like marrying someone older when you're young marrying someone younger when you're old the age difference the questions of like being a guide to the other person or wanting to be guided wanting to have like a sugar daddy or or just like a mature person in your life um, you're not likely to jump into marriage, right? You need to, you're sort of, you're sort of thoughtful about it and practical and maybe a bit guarded. Saturn in the seventh can create, Saturn in the seventh also brings karma about around relationships and kind of questions you need to address, topics you need to understand because until you do, you may meet people who are harsh and tough with you maybe teaching you lessons so until you learn to value yourself and see yourself as a source of strength you might be like drawing people who are not so good for you but once you do then saturnian gifts are likely to be more abundant and really kind of i think more positive manifestation for those with saturn and libra saturn and capricorn or aquarius harder if your saturn is an aries leo or cancer and for those people, I have Saturn in Aquarius candle or oil that can help improve the effects of the more challenging Saturn placements. Check out my website and let me know how Saturn in the seventh house resonates with you. If you have Uranus in the seventh house, Uranus is um, not stable, right? So with Uranus in the seventh house, your relationships can be quick. There can be sudden new beginnings sudden endings, sudden twists and turns. You may get married when nobody expects you to. You may get divorced when people are imagining that your relationship is the most stable. You may remarry someone. It's like life, your love life can be full of like uniqueness. Even people you date are likely to be unique, right? You're gonna be surprising people with your romantic choices all throughout your life. Maybe you're really young, you marry someone 30 years older than you. When you're older, you marry someone 30 years younger than you. Maybe they are um, a crazy scientist or someone like a genius eccentric. The difficulty here is because you tend to draw these people who are unique and different. You sometimes may struggle to see your own eccentricity and your own beauty and your own uniqueness. So remember that our partners reflect who we are so appreciate your own genius as well and you need independence you need friendship in a relationship you need a partner who stimulates your mind and you're not likely to have a conventional marriage right kind of picket fence um two dogs house in the suburbs you need something that is more your own maybe you live in different cities maybe you live in separate houses whatever it might be for you and let me know how this resonates if that's the placement you have neptune in the seventh house is a blessing and a curse right which actually can be the truth for most placements probably less so for strong venus um but neptune in the seventh neptune is the planet of dreams ideals but also illusions right so it can make you a bit delusional in relationships where you're not willing to admit the truth to yourself. Maybe you are with someone who is never going to commit, but you're trying, you're like hoping and waiting. 
or maybe you're drawn to people with addiction issues and these are more difficult manifestations of it right like idealizing the person clearly like closing your eyes on open visible to everybody else flaws but in a more positive way maybe you're just idealizing them and they're a normal human being but you're able to create a fantasy quality or you're able to imagine your relationship to be more perfect you can also with this placement if you're more aware of your negative tendencies you can draw in a partner who is creative who is spiritual artistic imaginative someone you're truly connecting to with on a spiritual level which is another important thing for you with this placement you want a partner who sees your soul someone you can see and understand um, but you really need to do a lot of inner work before this placement brings good results because like I said on the negative you can have issues with boundaries you can have issues understanding yourself understanding what you want understanding the other person um, so even taking a moment to write it down you know make a list of things you crave make a list of things you would not agree with um, and trying to stick to them as much as you can another positive here is you can be really lovely at like social work or doing work that helps other people because that's the image that you project in the world or you project in relationships next if you have pluto in the seventh house pluto intensifies so pluto in the house of relationships is the sign of deep passionate relationships there might be a lot going on behind closed doors that people don't know about maybe you like role playing maybe you like submissive kind of relationships um you can be the one who's domineering or you can be the one more submissive very kind of you know ups and downs love and hate intensity in relationships not it, it's not going to be boring you're not going to be like indifferent in love could also be a sign of especially at some point in life whenever we have planets in the seventh house they can play out in a few different ways in different parts of our life could be the sign that you dated a pluto like uh mafia underlord someone with addiction issues someone with some kind of like obsessive tendencies someone who would like check your phone and stalk you and follow you or whatever as you as you get older as you get more aware of what you want instead of dealing with these unhealthy control obsessive feelings and people who are trying to control you or whom you're trying to control you tend to choose raw vulnerability you tend to choose relationships that are more deep and authentic and truthful um so beware of the more shadowy side right like obsession jealousy manipulation stalking your partner not expressing your true feelings trying to have control trying to be like in charge and instead choose vulnerability and honesty and please share with me how has this placement been affecting your love life if you have chiron in the seventh house chiron is a wounded healer so it's a wound when you have chiron in the seventh house there may have been difficulties in your parental relationship maybe they had a very dysfunctional marriage or maybe your father wasn't available and you um you have processed that internally and started to maybe doubt yourself or doubt your your validity as a partner or your ability to draw someone in so a lot of times the wounding starts early in life right um and as a result you may draw in these people who are hurt that's another thing with chiron in the seventh house representing other people maybe people you draw in are wounded or kind of lost or traumatized right so sometimes you draw these people in because you feel like those are the only types of people who will love you or if you need to help the person if you need to rescue them maybe they're not going to abandon you so so the logic can be a bit flawed right or like definitely starts within definitely starts by 
looking within and wondering why do you have such low opinion of yourself and how can you start to value yourself more how can you understand that your happiness depends on you fully and you don't really need the other person you don't really need to make the other person happy um i think you can benefit you can definitely grow a lot through relationships but that growth will come with understanding your self-worth but you can also explore being on your own. You can explore and understand what makes you happy outside of a relationship. And understand that people mirror you, right? So if you're drawing people who are wounded, who are lost and confused, maybe you need to work on yourself. And as a result, they will actually see your growth and your progress and will change with you. But the change definitely starts within. And it starts by addressing the fears and the worries about love and about not being loved. So this is it. I don't really work with Lilith if you have Lilith. Um, so not doing asteroids, but these are the main planets I'm gonna focus on. And we are turning into the second half of the houses. So the series will keep going. Let me know if you have any questions, if you have any feedback, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.